Hi, this is Tammy Roussel from Mitzi Kit, and today I'm happy to announce our continued partnership with the Medford Council on Aging, bringing you the Care Cafe to Go program. This year, we are also being sponsored by the Medford Arts Council and Massachusetts Cultural Council. We are providing a subscription delivery that will be brought to you once a quarter. And our first delivery is coming soon in June. Our subscription model will include some literature from the Medford Council on Aging, letting you know what's going on in their senior center, as well as some literature from our partners like Bridges by Epic of Westford. And Medford has provided a cute and functional water bottle for your use as well. The Mitzi Kit project will be a wall hanging just in time for the 4th of July. It's a fleece wall hanging that's easy to put together and you'll just love having it on your wall or on your door. So let's get started with the instructions on how to do this. Your project will include two colorful 13 inch fleece squares with 4th of July pattern and it has these tactile bordered holes around all four sides that will enable you to lace by touch. In each corner, there are paper labels and in the center, a pretty happy 4th of July greeting. In addition, you'll have four white shoelaces that will be used to lace your 13 inch fleece squares together. And you'll notice that on the end of the shoelaces are the aglets that make it easy to poke through. You'll also have one red shoelacing, and this will be used later to put on the top for hanging. And then you have four, oops, three <laughs> red, white, and blue fleece strips and a wooden dowel. In addition, you have some cardstock and envelopes that will be used for your 4th of July greeting card. So let's get started with the lacing. Use one of your white shoelaces and insert the aglet into a corner hole adjacent to one of the paper labels, going top down through the hole and pull through until you have about three inches of your shoelace tail on the top. Then go up over the edge and top down through the next hole. If you're going right to left, then to the left of where you started, or if you're going left to right, to the right of where you've started. As you go, remove the plastic clips and continue to insert your shoelace top down through the adjacent holes. Each of these holes are about an inch apart. Use your index finger and thumb to feel them if you are blind or visually impaired. And you can use your index finger also to feel the shoelace as it's being pulled so that you don't pull too tightly. You want the shoelace to come over the edge and fit snugly like a hug on the top of your, your wall hanging, but you don't wanna pull so tightly that it's going to make your fabric cinch up. Another tip here is you can go ahead and as you are lacing, straighten out your shoelace. Sometimes it'll kind of twist and turn. If you use your thumb and your index finger to smooth it out as you're pulling it through, that should help. So now we're gonna continue, as I mentioned, going top down through, through all of the holes. This is called an, an overcast stitch because you're coming up over the edge of the fabric and creating this pretty stitch along the top. I'm going to continue doing this, making sure we're not missing any of the holes until we get to the last hole in the corner. Once we get there, the process is just a little different. Just a couple more holes and again, you can remove these plastic clips as you get to them.
And now in this corner hole, instead of going top down, we're going bottom up. Poking that through, bringing the shoelace and the tail up through the top. This makes it so that the shoelace tails are always on the top of your project. Now we're gonna continue on with our second shoelace. And we're gonna turn our project one quarter around so that we can again start in the corner hole right by the shoelace tail that we just came up through. You're going to push that shoelace over a little bit so that you can edge your next aglet right next to it, going top down through that same corner hole, and then come up over the edge again and top down through the next adjacent hole. Once again, remove the plastic clips as you go and continue the process. This can be a really soothing activity. You can do this while you're sitting, um, talking, or listening to the radio, or watching a program. It's a great way just to relax and do something creative. And it's not too difficult, so it can be a stress reliever as well. As you bring that shoelace up over the edge, remember, we're just trying to make it snug against the top edge and not pulling so tightly that your fabric will bunch. The same process as before, top down, going through each hole, making sure we don't miss any. And when we get to the corner hole, again, in these corner holes, we're going to go bottom up so that our tail will end up on the top. So we'll come right back up from the bottom up in this corner hole. And again, pull that shoelace tail so that it's going to lay right on the top. And now we have two sides laced. We'll turn our project another quarter turn, take our next shoelacing, white shoelacing, and again, edge that shoelace that is in that corner we just laced through over and squeeze the aglet in beside it, pulling the lacing through until the tails are about even. And again, do our overcast stitch by coming up over the edge and going top down through the holes either right to left or left to right, and removing the plastic clips as we get to them. So this should be becoming very familiar to you. Again, if you're having any issues with the ribbon twisting, just lift up on it a little with your fingers and use your index finger and thumb to straighten it out. This can also be a great activity to do as a team. If anyone is having any issues with dexterity, sometimes we do this as a team activity where one person puts the shoelace aglet through the hole and the other person pulls it through. It's fun to do things together as well. Many times we find that kids and grandkids like to do this with their parents or grandparents or even great grandparents. It's nice to know that you can have a family activity that you can do all together. And so that completes our third side, coming up through the bottom again with the shoelace tails on top. So we turn one more quarter way around and again repeat the process. Pull the shoelace over so that you can insert your fourth shoelace beside it in that corner hole up over the top and repeat your overcast stitch once again. And if you've done our fleece pillow kits, you know that typically we insert something in this fourth hole of a fleece, a fleece pillow insert. <laughs> but because we don't have a pillow this time, we can continue on with our lacing without stopping. This makes an awesome 4th of July decoration. 
something that you can hang on your door or you can hang on your wall. And it's just nice to know that you made it, something you can feel proud of and it's very attractive. Or you might want to give it as a gift. Everyone likes to have something on their door or even on their wall to celebrate these special occasions. So we're getting close to that last corner hole again, coming over the top and removing the plastic clips as we go. And we'll come top down through the next to the last hole and then up bottom up through that corner hole. There. Now you should have two tails in each corner. And you have those sticky labels in each corner that you can remove. Set those aside, you won't need those anymore. And now we're going to simply tie some knots and bows in each corner. Again, you want to tie these fairly tight, but make sure that your knot isn't cinching up your fabric in the corner. Bows add the finishing touch. So we'll do this around all four sides. Another nice thing about this project, if you notice your happy 4th of July sign has a little um, line underneath it. And there's enough space there if you wanted to put a room number, if you're in an apartment, you could do that. Or you could even put someone's name to personalize this. And here we go, our fourth corner, doing our little bow. There, it looks so pretty already. Okay, so we're ready to put our fleece ribbons. They're gonna drape along the bottom, kind of like a kite tail. It just adds another pop of color to your project. So we're going to just take the bottom portion of our fleece wall hanging and look for that little overcast loop next to the corner. Pull it up a little and tuck these fleece, these three fleece lacings right underneath that loop. Then pull them through until they're about halfway so that the tails on either side of the loop are even. And that's it. You have a nice little drape of color flowing down from the corner of your wall hanging. And now we'll move on to putting the wooden dowel through the top. This is gonna help us to hang the wall hanging up. And you're simply gonna find the second stitch down on the back side of your wall hanging on both the right and the left and slide that wooden dowel underneath that second stitch on each side on the right and left. That will hold your wooden dowel in place. Next, to hang it, we're gonna use that red shoelacing we're gonna tie this to the wooden dowel about three stitches in from the left and right. Just loop it over the dowel, make a knot, and I might double knot it to make it nice and tight. You've got a lot of shoelacing here, so you can adjust this. Make the um, tail as long or as short as you want. The uh, longer the tail is, then the shorter the loop will be for you to hang your wall hanging. So I went three over from one side, and now I'm going to go three loops over from the other side to tie the other side of the lacing to the wooden dowel. And again, I'm pulling on the lacing to adjust it to the length that I want. Tie a double knot, 
the tails will hang right behind the wall hanging so no one will see them. And there you go. Now you have your loop so that you can hang up your wall hanging. Let's see how it looks. Pretty. In addition to the wall hanging, we have also provided this customized greeting card. It has a framed opening where you can slide in the picture of your choice from some options that we've provided you. It also has an envelope for storing your card. And we provided this little cardstock that will enable you to trace around the picture of your choice and then cut it out so that you can insert it into the frame. Here we're demonstrating as we slide the card on top of the picture of choice and trace around it with a pencil. Make sure to center the picture in the middle of the card before tracing. Once you've traced around fully around the picture of your choice, use your scissors and carefully cut on the line. We have several different pictures illustrating different 4th of July sayings that will be perfect for your greeting card. Make sure to trim all sides so that it is the right size to insert into the framed card. So now slide it in, making sure that it's right side up. And you might have to adjust it a little bit and pull it down with your fingers in the center. Make sure it goes all the way to the bottom. And there you have your illustration. Now, if you want to have a customized message, just write it on the inside of the card. And there you have it, your customized greeting card. Some of the other options for pictures are this cute dog with her sparkler and her American flag, one of my favorites. We also have children carrying an American flag and several other options that came with your kit. We hope you've enjoyed this. If you have any questions at all, feel free to contact us at Mitzi Kit at 978-419-1824 or go to www.mitzikit.org. Once again, thank you from Mitzi Kit and MCOA for being part of our summer subscription delivery. We also thank our sponsors, the Medford Arts Council and Massachusetts Cultural Council. Happy crafting, everyone.